<clears throat> Alright, Shalom. You know, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory be to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kudash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And, um, you know, this is going to be a, a lesson going into, um, you know, what the uh, so-called white man calls UFOs or UAPs. Or we know them to be in the scriptures as the chariots or the Most High. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, the same chariots that are going to invade this place real soon. Um, you know, and that day, you know, is nearer than when we believed. In fact, I'm going to get a scripture real quick just to open up with. In Romans 13 and 11 because um, you know it is imperative that we know exactly what time we're in um, you know but before Yahweh Shai and the angels come and invade this place we also know that the MOTB you know that has to be you know pushed and made mandatory all right um, you see how they're coming out with this whole world coin, world coin thing you know the um, this orb that you got to stare into for biometrics and you know, they're pretty much getting the people used to, um, you know, scanning themselves, basically. You know, like they themselves are some sort of barcode. <laughs> Alright, um, you know, the scriptures speak about the mark of the beast, man. And, um, you know, he calls of all, both small and great, right? Revelation 13 and 16. Rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark. You know, in their, in their dominant hand, okay? Their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. So Esau is pretty much going to put these people in a situation of, um, you know, the scripture says a gift destroy of the heart. You know, there's talks of people being able to receive 2,000 euros every month, regardless of whether you are in work or not. Um, and they're saying, um, in response to the whole, this whole AI taking over all these jobs, you know, hey, like they say, the World Economic Forum, that you will own nothing and you will be happy. So the next step would be the UBI, Universal Basic Income, which for everyone to sit on their ass and just receive their rations from the state. But there's a catch, you know, you got to receive that chip. All right, and that's what we're, um, we're waiting for. We're waiting for Esau to pretty much turn the deception level up to maximum volts or maximum voltage and come out with it. Alright, because he knows he has but a short time. This is Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And I know in the time that now it is high time, right? That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. So we're supposed to be, we're not supposed to be in a slumbered state. Alright, um, you know, in fact, I want to get this scripture here. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, because the Apostle Paul, you know, um, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 6, straight to the point. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. You know, Akim, so we have to watch, you know. We have to watch and be sober-minded. All right, sober, the opposite of being drunk, you know, drunk with these false philosophies of this world, you know, but being sober in this truth, all right. Wisdom being the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all that get and get understanding. That's in Proverbs 4 and 7. So we have to we have to be awake, man. You know, because you got Jake out there walking around talking about how woke they are, but they're really asleep. For they that sleep, this is verse 7, for they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunken are drunken in the night. Yeah, what are they drunk on? They ain't drunk on actual wine. Okay. They're symbolic of them being drunk on these false philosophies, man. All right, as the scripture says, um... This is uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. You see that? So strong drink, you know, wine is likened unto what? You know, uh, methods of deception coming in, in the ways of these false philosophies of this world. All right? False teachings of this world. All these different religions, so and so forth. Okay? Um, 
And you know, you got our uh, people that are drunken, you know, they they you know they they're in an inebriated state, intoxic in, completely intoxicated with the filth and the wine of this world, man. Alright, verse 8 But let us who are of the day be sober Putting on a breastplate of faith and love And for a helmet the hope of salvation Because ultimately what we want is You know, to receive salvation When the Lord comes back To indeed invade this place Alright, so going back to um, Romans 13 And 11 now It says that knowing the time That now it's high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. All right? So we want to be saved, man. You know, we want to... Ultimately, that's what we want. We want to be saved. We don't want to... We don't want to be here when... You know, when Yahweh Shai comes to judge this place. We don't want to be here, man. We don't want to be on the earth. We want the Lord to, to beam us up into his fathership. All right? And, you know, NASA... You know, there's been live feeds. where they have to, They've actually had to shut down because they've seen, you know, ships... Pop up on a NASA feed You know Bigger than the size of the earth <laughs> You know You know When you When you hear about things like that Scripture should come to mind Like 2nd Ezra The 13th chapter You know In fact I'm gonna hold that scripture as well You know Just in case You know I forget it Just leave it on the tab right there Alright So I got this word salvation Alright It says Soteria Okay Soteria That's where you get the word Sota from Which means saviour Sota You had um, Who is it? Ptolemy Sota Okay He named himself the saviour Okay And that was an Edomite Okay And um, and pretty much You know What you got to understand is, is this, that's, that's the nature of Esau You know He sets up himself As the saviour of the earth Alright Even to this day You still got people worshipping uh, Cesare or Caesar Borgia, okay, which was the son of Pope Alexander the Sixth, uh, Rodrigo uh, Borgia, which is nothing but what Renaissance art, all right. Renaissance meaning rebirth, the rebirth of Esau Edom's power structure on the earth, and you have something called Renaissance art where, you know, you had something called iconoclasm, which means I uh, icon destruction or image breaker. Okay, so Esau knows, man. And that's why he puts himself up as a savior, as the heavenly father and his son. Okay, because when you take down another nation, you don't put them up as the savior. You put yourself up as, so that's that renaissance art. All right, but the Lord don't look like a so-called white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. All right, the scriptures clearly tell you the description of Yahweh Shai. He's a so-called black man. Okay, from the tribe of Judah. And he's coming back to deliver his elect. All right, so the Savior, all right, going back to the Greek, uh, soteria, all right, it says uh, deliverance, uh, preservation, safety, all right, uh, salvation, all right, it says deliverance from the molest molestation, molestation of enemies, and we have enemies, man, and our top enemy is a nation of Esau Edom, when you read in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter. In an ethical sense, that which concludes to the soul's safety for, or salvation. Okay. Um, so pretty much. That's all I want to read on that. Let's go back to... Um, yeah, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. All right. So our, our salvation is close. And them so-called UFOs, they, you know, they're showing up and they're showing out. Now, I got this... Um, what inspired me to do this lesson indeed was, uh, you know, just scrolling down. I see this Sky News channel here, as you can see, it says UK not doing enough to investigate UFO reports. And um, but as I was scrolling down, I see the number of the views, 144K, 144,000 views that was put up four days ago. All right. Delayed, uh, um, dated 27th of July, 2023. That's four days ago. So, you know, 144K. For those of us that know, that's a spiritual number. You know, the tabernacle of David, the 12,000 out of each of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. All right. The future governing body over the nation, um, which consists of the tabernacle of David, man, which is a very important number uh, spoken of in Revelation, the seventh chapter, which has been a moment since I've actually read that one. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up Revelation, um, Revelation 7. 
Okay. This is um you see that? The hundred and forty four thousand. See, we ain't lying, man. See, this is this is biblical truth here, man. Alright, this is a future prophecy which is about to take place. Alright, this is Revelation chapter seven, verse four. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and it was sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Yasharallah. Alright? Which the word there should be um you know um but well, there's many, many instances when you when the scripture says children of Israel, you know, the word there in the Hebrew is bun. All right, the sons of Israel. All right, because the Lord is dealing with the men, you know, um, straight up and down, you know. Um, and ultimately, you know, through the men, you know, will, you know, they have the women will be saved in childbearing, like the scripture says, and so on and so forth. So you're going to have more than 144,000 being saved. All right, but initially you're dealing with the 144. That's the tabernacle of David, you know, the 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, these are men, all right? And they're going to have their families with them, all right? Whole households are going to be saved of the elect. So this is our faith, man. This is our hope, all right? This is of the tribe of Judah. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it's going to go through all the tribes, all right? You can go through that for yourself, but just to, for the interest of time, um, the tribe of Judah was still 12,000. Reuben 12,000, Gad 12,000, and so on and so forth. This is Asher, Naphtalim, Manassas, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, all right, and so on and so forth, right? Verse 9, it says, And after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds. Now you might say, oh, it says they're of all nations, so that means all nations can be saved. No. Okay. Only the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be saved. And remember, it says of all nations. Now, precept this with Revelation chapter 5, uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, okay, this is the direct precept that we go to, um, this is Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou art, was slain, alright, it's talking about who, Yahweh Shai, which is the, the Lamb of God. Okay, you see how it says the subtitle here? The angels exalt the lamb. Who is the lamb? That's Yahweh Shai, man. All right? The son of the Most High. And has redeemed us to Yahweh, right? By thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So out of them. Okay, and has made us unto our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to reign on the earth, man. Like, the fuck do you think this is, bro? Like, the Lord is actually raising up future rulers, you know, being joint heirs with Yahweh Shai to reign upon the earth. And that lines up with Revelation, the second chapter, and the 25th verse on down. You know? So the Lord is going to, like, redeem us, man, out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. Because you got elect that are scattered among these different nations. They might look like these other nations. you got elect out there that look straight up like Esau. Look, look straight like the so-called white man. But guess what? They're going to be saved. If they believe and they're of the elect. All right, it don't matter what you look like, man. It matters if you believe and if you're an Israelite and if you're of the elect, ultimately. Okay? What well, the Apostle Paul said um, in Romans 11 and 7. Uh, let's get this scripture. All right. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So who is this elect? When you go into that word election, all right, you go into the root word. It's been a while since I've gone into this um this word right here, election, right? Because you got ekloge, all right. It says uh act of picking out, choosing, all right. So this is you know elect meaning chosen, man. But then you go into the root word, eklego mai. It should be eklego mai. All right, it says to pick out. Same thing, all right. To pick out, choose like. You know, like when you choose your, uh, when you was at school and you wanted the best ballers on your team, you choose the best ballers, you know, the, you know, the best, um, <laughs> the best students that were lined up, you choose them on your team because you want to win. That's the elect, man, you know, picking out for oneself. All right. And these elect are being predestined for salvation before the foundation of the world, man. All right. And then look, when you goes down here, look at it. Um, it says, uh. Of the Most High Yahweh choosing whom he judged fit to receive his favours and separated from the rest of mankind. So who is this rest of mankind? Are they going to be saved? No. Alright? To be peculiarly his own 
and to be attended on continually by his gracious oversight. So hold on a minute, where's the equality in this? We're reading this straight out of the scriptures, man. Eklegomai in the Greek, right? The root word, right? For the election. All right, so who are this... Who are these people receiving the Most High's favors, separated from the rest of mankind? It says, i.e., the Israelites, man. You see, you see, this is what people don't seem to understand. See, the Lord, He's only dealing with His people, okay, and the elect at that. That's why the Scripture says in um, Deuteronomy seven and six, right? It says, "For thou art an holy people unto the Lord, Yahweh thy power." The Lord, Yahweh, thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So we are actually, that rules out equality. We're above the other people on the face of the earth, man. And that's why, um, you know, Ezra was, was complaining to the Lord and saying, Look, Lord, if the Lord, if the world be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world, man? You know, see, Jake ain't got that ruling class mentality, man. But the elect... That have woken up to this truth, man. Guess what? They they're they're adopting a ruling class mentality. All right, the elect understand that they are above these other nations. We understand that we're the salt of the earth, man. And when I say we, I'm talking about the hopeful elect, man. And I pr and I pray that I'm one of them. All right, and the word holy means separate, man. All right. In fact, get another scripture. Sirach chapter seventeen. Verse 17, for in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. When you are a ruler over a people, right, is that equality? All right, is that one people being over another people? Come on, man. But Israel is the Lord's portion. You can't, go, you can't get around that scripture. So the question is now, who is the Lord coming back to save? The Israelites. All right, and you can't get around that. You see that? I.e. the Israelites. The root word for election, eklegomai, which is what? The Israelites. The elect of the nation of Israel. Alright? And that's why the Apostle Paul said that. Israel have not obtained that which he's seeking for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So, going back to this video here, you know, um, the UK not doing enough to investigate UFO reports. And these UFOs, they keep popping up. Alright? People be... Um, and Esau can't hide it, because everyone's got a smartphone. There's cameras everywhere. And people be talking about these UFOs left, right, and center, man. This keeps popping up in the news. All right? And this is a curse unto Esau. All right? This is a curse unto Esau. Uh, Zephaniah or Zechariah 5. All right? Let me hold that scripture. So let me go ahead and play you a little bit of this clip right here. Turn up the volume a little bit. Yes, and quite an interesting group of people giving evidence. So what are the kind of claims that are being heard? Well, we had uh, yesterday two U.S. Navy pilots talk about uh, UFOs, frankly, running rings around their aircraft. And of course, they... they you hear that? All right, UFO, UFOs running a ring around their aircraft, man. Let me pull that bit back. ...the cutting edge of, of aerospace technology, their aircraft. And of course, they, they fly uh, UFOs, frankly, running rings around their aircraft. Yeah, because Esau can't touch that technology, man. All right, and the same these fighter jets, S sixteens, and all these fighter jets, you know, they ain't got nothing on the chariots, bro. These chariots got cloaking devices. They can change trajectory at a moment's notice. They can hit speeds that Esau can can only dream of hitting. You know, but you see, Esau's wet dream is to boldly go where no man's gone before. That's why he puts films out there like Star Trek and that. All right, the USS Enterprise and all of that and whatever, where they wanna search out the heavens and that. Which they're ultimately doing that because trying to search out the heavens, mind. Which we brought this out at a camp on Saturday as well, man. Because uh, uh, the Lord said that if they can do that, and if they could search out the, um, the earth beneath, then the Lord would cast off the, the nation of Israel. All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night. Which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai of a host is his name. Yeah, which means what? The Lord of the armies. See, a lot of people don't seem to realize that when Yahweh Shai comes back, that you know he's gonna bring that pain, man. He's he's gonna be leading a whole army, a whole the host of the heavenly host. Alright? Okay, angels with fierce countenances that he's gonna be leading the flock of. Alright, and they're gonna come and swoop in on this place with violence. 
Like the scripture says, dust with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. Okay. If those ordinances, what ordinances? The sun for a light by day, the moon, the stars. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So you think Esau don't know this? Of course he knows. Okay. That's why they claim to go to the moon and so on and so forth. Okay, which in 2019, I think it was like the 50th anniversary. All right, uh, where they supposedly uh, landed on the moon. <clears throat> you mean to tell me they ain't never gone back? With all this advanced technology that they got since the late 60s, they had never gone back to the moon? That showed you that they never went there in the first place. So this man, you're going to find out that he's just a fucking fraud. He's a liar. He's a devil. He's a criminal. He's a murderer. He's all of the below because the scriptures call him the basis of men. All right, and that's just that's his, that's in his nature to deceive. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, this is the point, right? I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And this is ultimately why, you know, Esau, you know, he accuses, when I say Esau, I'm, I'm talking about the wicked, the so called white man, you know, that accuses us before the Most High. You know, even though he sets up institutions and platforms, you know, for Jake to go off, you know, and he, he sits there and slanders us before the Heavenly Father, accuses us before the before the Lord. And that's why and that's that scripture in um you know um Habakkuk. Uh let me see if I can get it real quick. I think it's Habakkuk two. You know, but the point is you know, this is what they do. They wanna they wanna search out the heaven above, they wanna in the foundations of the earth searched out. Well you had that submarine that went to go and apparently went to go and search out the, the remains of the Titanic, but that, that um got imploded, you know? So they can't really even deal with the pressure down there, man. And the Lord's pointing the bounds that Esau can't pass. The scriptures tell you that too. So Esau can't search out the heaven above or go, you know, search out the earth beneath. You can't do that. All right, that's beyond his capability, man. He can only do, you know, what the Lord limit or allows him to do. Okay, as he accuses us before the Most High in the, in the process. This is Habakkuk chapter two, verse fifteen. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbour drink, that putteth thy bottle to him and maketh maketh him drunken. Also, remember we spoke about that wine. All right, all the shit that Esau's pushing upon our people, making them drunk, man. All right, uh, pushing out this um, alphabet people, pride. You know, all these these dirty ways of life, man. These these ways of life that are contrary to how we're supposed to be living as the Lord's holy people, man, on the earth. Okay? See, the Lord, you know, pretty much gave Esau the power of the earth. And, you know, he's the wicked. Like in Job 9 and 24, the earth has been given into his hand. But what's Esau doing with that power? He's putting the bottle to his neighbor, man, and making him drink. All right? And makest him drunken also that thou mayest look on their nakedness. You see that? Okay, and that nakedness represents what? Being in a state of shame. Okay, when you're naked, you're in a state of shame. You want to cover up, right? Okay, um, and they see his shame. You know, that's why we've got to keep a hold of our garments, man, um, which is this truth. Revelation chapter 16 and 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, which is this truth. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. See, we ain't supposed to be naked. Being naked is being without this truth, man. That's being naked, man. And, you know, and those of us that are, you know, those of the nation of Israel that are naked in these last days, they're going to be ashamed. And that you can go into Daniel 12 from, the, from that precept. Everlasting shame and everlasting contempt. You see, the wicked of our people, they're going to be ashamed because they trusted in this man's society. They trusted in this kingdom. All right. They weren't watching. They weren't set up to watch. The Lord, you know, put the spirit of deep sleep upon them. All right, but for those of us that are in the know, we're watching. All right, articles like this, you know, uh, news reports like this, UFOs. For you to not know what a UFO is, or what Esau calls a UFO or a UAP in 2023, for you being an Israelite to not know what they are, man, you are lost. All right, and you're really asleep. Talking about you're woke, you ain't you ain't woke. You're asleep, man. All right. For the average Jake out there that don't know about this truth, you ask them, what are the, what's in them UFOs? Do you even know? They won't be able to tell you, oh, it's them angels, man. 
All right, and we can prove it in the scriptures. All right, we'll prove that's in the scriptures then. Okay, let's get Psalm 68. Psalm 68 and 17, right? It says, The chariots of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, are 20 thousands, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai in the holy place. You see that? So the chariots, see, there's many uh, 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 in the scriptures, the UFOs are known as chariots, a wheel within a wheel, a cloud, a flying roll. All right, as pertaining in the book of Zechariah, the fifth chapter, which we're going to get in a minute, Lord willing. But the point is, the chariots of the angels, you know, the chariots of the Most High are thousands of them, even thousands of angels. There's angels in, the, in these heavenly vehicles, man. And what are they doing? They're running circles around Esau's fighter jets. Let's talk about uh, UFOs, frankly, running rings around their aircraft. Yeah, running rings around Esau's aircraft, man. All right, so Esau, you, are, you know, your arms are too short to box with the Most High, man, as the saying goes. All right, and when Yahweh Shai is going to come in here and invade this place, you know, in a violent fashion, bro, this is what we're waiting for. But before that happens, this is why Esau, him pushing that CHIP is, is all the more closer because before Yahweh Shai comes back, you know, the, the hour of temptation has to, has to come. We've got to pass the test in order to be saved, right? They, they fly the cutting edge of, of aerospace technology and uh, they said the things that they came up against uh, were potentially so advanced that they posed an existential threat to the United States <laughs> hey man. the things that they came up against was what? let me, let me pull that back man because you know uh... <laughs> oh man Things that they came up against uh, were potentially so advanced that they posed an existential threat. Advanced, man. They're so advanced. Let's go up that word advanced. The word that he used. The word advanced. Okay. Modern and recently developed uh, far on or ahead in development. <laughs> oh, man. You know, these, these, these chariots are far on ahead, bro. So how you going to catch up to that, Esau? All right, what, what you going to do? What is the full meaning of, of advance? Ahead or far or further along in progress? Complexity, knowledge, skill. They're, they, man, they're, 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 they're far ahead in, in knowledge, man. Skill and complexity. You don't even know how complex these chariots are, bro. All right, there ain't nothing that you can do, Esau, man. Your kingdom's done, bro. Just like the ancient Babylonian kingdom, you know, Belshazzar was drinking out the vessels of the Lord, you know, and then the writing came on, the handwriting came on the wall. And who did they need to interpret that writing? Daniel, because the spirit was dealing with Daniel. Many, many tekel, right? Yo, you, your kingdom's been numbered, man. Okay, you, your days are numbered, Esau. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. All right, scriptures describe these um, UFOs as a curse unto you. This is get Zechariah 5 and 1. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. All right, and that flying roll represents what? Uh, the chariot. All right, the length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. And right now they're running, running rings around your um, cutting edge technology, Esau. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off on this side according to it. And everything that Esau has, he stole. Okay. Esau is the thief, man. Re read John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off on that side according to it. And I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies. And it shall enter into the house of the thief. All right, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof, and the stones thereof. Because ultimately, what's Yahweh Shai coming back with? The, the the chariots, but they're gonna have that laser beam technology. So the Lord's coming back with that fire. All right, with them with them angels, man. Okay, we can get um Luke twelve and forty nine real quick. <clears throat> which reads, um, I am come to set fire upon the earth, and what will I 
if it be already kindled. So the Lord said he's coming to set fire upon the earth. So the Lord's going to bring that heat. All right, he's bringing that heat. Another one, Isaiah 66. See, I've really got that loaded up in the search bar, man, because I'll be typing in these scriptures. All right, this is uh, Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, will come with fire and with his chariots. There goes the chariots again, like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And that day is going to be magnificent, Archim, you know? And this is why, you know, indeed, this is a very, very exciting time because we're going to get be able to witness that. Us that, you know, that believe, you know, and, and are hoping for the Lord's mercy, you know, we hope that in the midst of all of this judgment that's going to take place in these last days, that the Lord is going to, um, you know, uh, take us up off the earth as he comes with flames of fire. You know, because that's that's our hope. We want to be saved. And this is why we do this work, because we want to receive salvation. Then the scripture says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, do we persuade men? For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And that word plead in the in the Hebrew is shapat, which means to judge. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So people want to talk about the good book. Next time you want to utter those words, the good book, the good book, think about the lamentations, mournings and woes within this book. Okay? Think about the slain of the Lord being many. Think about how the Lord is going to come back with fire. Think about scriptures like Revelation, the 19th chapter, which you know we've got to get that. Okay? Think about how that's like this, these, these chariots, you know, are a curse unto Esau. All right? The coming of the anointed, right? Which is Yahweh Shai, Revelation 19 and 11. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. And white represents purity and a horse represents power. Okay? That's why they measure, um, they measure horses, or measure cars, excuse me, with what? Horsepower, right? Okay? And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. So Yahweh Shai is coming back with pure power. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So that's what the Lord's coming back to do, to bring that war. All right, let's see if we can get some... Um, in righteousness, he doth judge and make war, man. Uh, polomio. Let's see what that word, war. Polomio. In the Greek, it says to war, to carry on war, to fight. All right, so the Lord's going to fight, man. He's going to fight you, Esau. All right, with them chariots. You're going to have your little fighter jets. All right. Um, uh, po polemos, the root word for war, right? A war, a fight, a battle, a dispute, a strife, quarrel. All right, and that battle, that, that lines up with uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter. There was war in heaven and Michael and his angels, right? All right, because Michael's going to be there with Yahweh Shai. Let's hold that scripture. Oh, man. Let's hold that scripture right there. Daniel 12. Since I mentioned that, let's get Daniel 12 first. And this time is going to be, it's going to be a crazy time. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stand up for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. All right, so Michael, and Michael in the Hebrew is what? Michael Allah. All right, which means he who is like the power. And the Lord is a man of war. So if the Lord is a man of war, and Michael is like, like, like the power, then what do you think Michael's coming back to do? To bring war too. All right, and he's going to be behind Yahweh Shai as Yahweh Shai leads the charge, leads the assault. All right, because the, the Lord has a quarrel against you Edomites, man. All right, and against all the people that are against the Lord's return, even of our nation. Okay, those that would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me, right? Luke, verse, uh, Luke 19 and 27. All right, so this is pretty much like going to be overkill when the Lord comes with that violent violent force that violent host <laughs> all right it says the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people we just read who the children the lord's people are deuteronomy 7 and 6 right the israelites and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book so that's our hope we want to be delivered man we want our names to be written in the book of life you know Okay, that's the elect. Only the elect are going to be saved. All right, and you can find that in um in Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. 
and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So that's how the Lord's coming back, as a force, power and great glory. All right, remember the scripture says he's not going to meet Esau as a man. And he shall send his angels, all right? So we're seeing a constant theme of Yahweh Shia coming back with what? The angels upon that white horse, pure power, that fathership. All right, with fire, right? And with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. All right, the elect of the nation of what? Israel. Remember Ekleg Omai? We went into election of the Israelites. Okay, from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay. And he's going to come back in the clouds, man. Revelation 1 and 4. And the same way that Yahweh Shai went is the same way he's coming back, right? Remember in Acts. Acts the, uh, is it the, Acts the first chapter, man. You know? Um, this is Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. All right? So everyone's going to see Yahweh Shai, man. And all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, let it be true. All right? So Esau's done, man. Everyone's going to see the Lord and those that pierced him too, which proves reincarnation is biblical. All right? Because those that pierced Yahweh Shai, they're back here today to receive their judgment in these last days. All right? But the, the, the scripture says he come up with clouds. When you read in Acts, the first chapter, which I was going to get, um, Acts chapter 1 And I'm going to start from verse 6 Alright When they therefore were come together They asked of him The disciples Saying Lord Would thou at this time Restore again the kingdom to Israel Now how comes they didn't Inquire about the heathen Why didn't they inquire about Ishmael or Moab Alright They only inquired about Israel And he said unto them It is not for you to know the times Or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power. Alright? Because no man knoweth, knoweth the, the the time but the Father only, right? But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Okay? Which we're witnessing that in these last days. All the way in, Amer in the Americas, man. This truth came out of the Americas. Out of America, Babylon the Great, the uttermost part of the earth. All right, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him. And you know this lines up with Matthew twenty-four and fourteen, and this gospel shall be preached throughout all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come, the uttermost part of the earth, man. And how is this word reaching far and wide? Ultimately, it's the internet, the YouTube that's doing the heavy lifting. That this word's done gone, gone all the way over the earth. Alright, that the scripture says, have they not seen, have they not heard? Alright, but the point is, a cloud received him out of their sight as he was saying these things to the disciples. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which were the two angels. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up, and that must have been an amazing sight to see, you know, to conversate with Yahweh Shai and then, as he's conversating with you to see him get taken up into a fathership, into a big ass chariot, man. That's why they were gazing up into heaven. You know, because that's far from the norm, you know. I mean, to have that event take place before your very eyes. One minute you're sitting there, you, you know, you're standing there, you're talking to the man. And then all of all of a sudden, Yahweh Shai is just getting beamed off the, off the, off the earth, man. And taken to a chariot. Alright, the same Yahweh Shai, the angels were telling them, stop, why are you gazing into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the same way Yahweh Shai went is exactly how he's going to come back. Okay? So this is what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the return of the Messiah, alright? Of the anointed, whose name is Yahweh Shai, man. Which means he deliverer, which is a nomen omen. And who is he coming back to deliver? You know, the elect of the nation of Israel. Alright? So we was reading in Daniel the 12th chapter that Michael's going to stand up as well. Alright? Because we were in Revelation the... Um, Revelation the... Uh, let's get it back again. Where was I? Revelation the 19th, 19th chapter. We spoke about that definition of war. 
Okay. Uh, we didn't even finish that, so I guess I can hold that scripture right there. Uh, well, let's keep on reading it. Revelation 19 and um, <clears throat> and 11. And I saw heaven, be, heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to bring that war. Okay, like you got that movie War of the Worlds, all right? And and the technology that them 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 ships had, they had what laser beam technology, did they not? When you see that one with Tom Cruise and he's you know, and he was turning pretty much the Lord was just you know, you know, these chariots were shooting laser beams and were turning people to dust. Okay? And the scripture says in 2nd Ezra the 13th chapter that nothing was to be perceived but dust and smell of smoke when the Lord is done with Babylon the Great. All right? It says his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. All right? Symbolic of all these kings, you know, that he's going to take down. In fact, um, the scriptures come to mind. Um, strike through kings. Because what do kings wear? Crowns, right? Strike through kings. This is Psalms 110 verse. I'm going to start from verse 4. The Lord have sworn, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, have sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Alright? He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. <laughs> oh man. You see, see, man, this script, these scriptures ain't um. <laughs> oh my goodness, man! Like, we can't wait, bro. Like all the dirty looks that you receive from these heathens, how they look down on. Just the other, you know, just before camp, I had to, I had to pull a shift. Before camp in the morning, and I had this Elamite talking, talking down to me. Don't give me attitude, and I'm just like, bro. I'm like, who the fuck are you talking to? See, we can't wait, man. We we just can't wait. And these heathen, they're gonna get put. Beneath us where they belong, man. But right now they're so puffed up. They got their piece of the pie in Esau's kingdom. They think they're better than us. But the Lord's gonna show them, man. And it's good to speak about the strangeness of our salvation. It's gonna be so far beyond all that they look for, man. Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter goes into that. All right. So the Lord's getting ready to what? Fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries, man. But he's gonna strike through these kings in the day of his wrath. Scripture says on his head was what? Many crowns, man. Alright? Many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name was called the Word of the Most High. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. White represents purity, righteousness. Alright? And them armies are talking about them angels that's going to be following you know, uh, uh, the commands of Yahweh Shai leading the charge. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. So these nations are going to be smitten, man. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. Alright, so this ain't going to be no... Playtime is over, man. Alright, you think running circles around your cutting edge technology, you think these UFOs are going to stop, stop at that. They're going to take it to a next level, man. All right? They're going to start putting people to death out here, man. And this is what's coming. The places are going to be filled with the dead bodies, man. All right? So let's go to Revelation 12 because we spoke about Michael the Archangel. Okay? This is uh, Revelation um, chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Yes. War in righteousness. The Lord just judge and make war, right? There's war. Okay? And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, which represents what? Esau. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Alright, so Esau ain't going to be, be able to prevail, man. Alright, yeah, they got cutting edge technology, but what what technology? Who gave them that technology? The most I did. Okay, but the Lord's got technology that are far more superior and advanced, far on ahead in development or progress. Alright, so Esau's done, man. He's finished. There's nothing he can do, man. Alright, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And you know we've got to go to um, 2nd Israel 13. 
And this is what the uh, the vision that Ezra's received. And I'm going to just, you know, read through it right here. This is, and it came to pass, 2nd Ezra 13 and 1. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. All right, and speaking of waves, you know, the, the, the scripture says that, you know, Habakkuk, the prophet Habakkuk said, Look, Lord, was thou angry against the rivers? You know, in fact, let's jump to that real, real quick fast. Um, Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3. I'm gonna start from um Man, I'm gonna start from free. It says the power came from Timon and the Holy One from Mount Paran Salah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Alright? Remember we just read in Matthew 24 that he's gonna come back with power and great glory, right? That's how the Lord's coming back with that fathership. He's gonna cover the heavens, man. And his brightness was as the light, and he had horns. Coming out of his hand. And there was the higher than of his power. If you've seen, ever seen like Dragon Ball Z, man, you see how, you know, the rays of light, concentrated laser beam, shooting forth. But that's going to be shot forth from these chariots. All right. Like again, I mentioned the War of the Worlds, man. Okay. In fact, let's bring up that War of the Worlds image. War of the world laser beams. Let's see, you see what, and I've done video videos of the, on this has been done countless amounts of times because this is the prophecy, one of the major prophecies we're waiting for. So you see this type of technology here. This is what we're waiting for, man. Where the Lord's just gonna start zapping the fuck out of people. People are gonna become, gonna get eviscerated. I don't know if that's not the, the right word to use, man. Um, uh, uh, destroyed. Put it that way. They're gonna be destroyed. Okay, you see that? See that laser beam technology? War of the world laser beams. See if we can get one with the um, with the Tom Cruise. Oh, well, you get the point. War of the world. War of the world. Um. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> There's some fire images, man. And that's how the Lord's going to come back with that fire, man. People ain't ready for this. See, everyone's walking around on the earth. See, oh, you see, what's he covered in there? Dust and smell of smoke. That's what I was talking about. So you watch that movie, World of War of the Worlds, <laughs> and Tom Cruise was running past people that were getting laser beamed. And what was on his clothing? Nothing but dust. That's what the people were turned into. Nothing but dust. So why are they putting this in the movies? All right. Why are they putting this in the movies, man? They're letting you know what's about to happen. You see, look at these people's faces. Look at them. Hopeless. On the floor. Running. Look at them, man. Absolutely hopeless, man. Hiding behind cars. Don't know what to do. One of these guys got his camera out. This guy's got his mouth wide open. You see that? The Lord is going to really put a stop to all this pride out here, man. And everything that we were saying... <laughs> Look at this one. Get back! Or well, whatever he's saying. Man, I might have to watch this movie again today. Get into that spirit, I'll tell you that. <laughs> this is Habakkuk chapter 3 and 4. And it, and his brightness was as the light. And he had horns coming out of his hand. That word horns goes into what? Rays of light. And there was the hiding of his power. Alright, before him went the pestilence. And let's, let's prove that. Unless you, you're you chatting shit. Um... The, and, and like I said already, the, the, you know, the apostles and the elders, they've done many videos on this topic. All right? But you got the word there in the Hebrew, Quran, horn. It says, of rays of light. You see that? Horn light projections, rays of light. Okay? Rays of light. When you have a, like an overhead projector, what does it do? It, 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 um, an overhead projector, it shines rays of light. Onto a white backdrop to produce an image. Okay. Project, uh, project, uh, projector. Okay, you see that? You see how that 
that light is coming out from that overhead projector. A device, look at that, a projector. A device that is used to project rays of light. You see that? Pro uh, especially an apparatus with a system of lenses for projecting sides of film onto a screen. Alright. Um, but that's, that's the pretty much the point I wanted to get. Rays of light, man. So that's what that word, you know, for horns is in Habakkuk. Damn, I closed the tab. I don't even know why I did that. Habakkuk 3. So let's go back into the scripture, Habakkuk 3. Um, and verse 5. And before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. And he stood and measured the earth, and behold, he drove asunder the nations. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. And mountains represent what? A government. All right. That's why you got something called like a summit meeting. Or you had the G7 summit. The summit means what? The peak of what? A mountain. So that represents governments. All right. And the perpetual hills did bow. And his ways are everlasting. And these hills represent the other nations. Okay. You can find that in Isaiah the second chapter. All right. So these he these heathens, they're going to bow down, man. They're going to they're gonna realize. All right. And that's what it means to be blessed. When, when nations are bowing down to you, that's when it, you're truly blessed. Okay, and I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, and the tents of the mid of Midian in did tremble, and the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea, that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? You see that. So the prophet Habakkuk he saw the destruction, and he said, "Lord, was you displeased against the rivers? Was your angry your anger against the rivers?" Or your wrath against the sea. And the Lord's going to come in on that white horse, right? And chariots of salvation, man. Okay. So they go back to uh, Second Ezra 13. And free now. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Again, coupled with Psalm 68 and 17. The chariots of the Most High had 20,000, even thousands of angels. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. The second death, man. Okay. Um, a time like no other since there was a nation. The Lord coming back with fire. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain, and flew upon it. So this this ship that Yahweh Shai come that's gonna come back on is gonna look like a, a giant mountain. Okay, this is what Ezra was seeing in the vision. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not, meaning Ezra couldn't see the end of this this father's ship. Alright, so that must have been one you know uh, a hell of a ship, man. Uh, the size of it, you couldn't even see the end of it. And after this I beheld and lo. All they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. So, you know, these guys with their cutting edge technology, they're going to be afraid. But the Lord's going to put the spirit upon them to fight. And that's that war that's going to be fought in heaven. Michael and his angels, you know, and a dragon fought in his angels, man. All right. And they show you that in an independence day. You had the president, the guy that was playing the president of the United States. You know, we won't go away without a fight into the night and all that. And all the nations came together to fight against the chariots. All right. Now, in the movie, they fucking prevailed. But guess what? In reality, in biblical prophecy, they're going to fucking fail, man. Okay. With their cutting edge technology. And lo, and as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I had saw that he had sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest. Aye? And when they were mixed, all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, Isaiah 66 and 15, because he come with, you know, uh, the Lord will come with fire, man, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, right? And the great tempest which fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. 
when I saw this, I was afraid. And Ezra was so afraid. He said, woe is me, woe is me. Who shall deliver me in those days? All right. So nothing was to be perceived but dust and smell of smoke. All right. Again, going back to that image, man, you know, with, um, you know, you know, Tom Cruise, you know, look at that. Nothing was to be perceived. Dust and smell of smoke, man, covered in dust. And that's why they put it in the movie War of the Worlds, man. This came out, was it 2005 is saying here? All right. And it's funny because the image has got 40 40.4k likes as well. Four represents mercy. All right. Hey, just like in the time of Noah, you had eight eight souls that were saved. Four, four, eight. You know, in the time of Noah, you had Noah and his household. They got saved. Noah, his wife, his sons and their wives. Eight souls, man. When the, when the first death came and the Lord flooded the earth. Hey, but we're coming to the time of the uh, second death. All right. And the Lord ain't going to spare anyone that's not of the elect, man. Um, shit, they're gonna they're gonna witness the wrath of the Lord. All right, so um, with that, you know, a hey, Babylon the Great ain't no one getting spared in Babylon the Great when the Lord comes back. That's not of the elect. Only the elect are being saved, man. All right, just to clarify that point. So with that, you know, I pray this is an edifying lesson. You know, um, <laughs> you can investigate the UFOs all you want, man. You can do enough. You cannot do enough. It ain't going to change the fact that these guys, the angels, the armies of heaven, they're going to come in a violent fashion to take this place down. So with that, man, I'm going to say Shalom.